What's up, guys? Artist version one here, and roll out the red carpet because it is the three way dance goes to the movies. And joining me as always is Shelby, aka Shubs. You only need to hang ma- mean bastards, but mean bastards you need to hang. You got that one take, huh? You yeah. almost fucked up. <laughs> you almost fucked up. I, saw, I heard that, but you Yeah. <laughs> and joining me as always is Heaven is a Place on Earth, Nick. Um, how oh, I want to say the wrestling version of this. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> That's how I thought of the 80s reference this week. I was like, do I feel like going to iTunes and fucking looking through 80s? And I was like, wait a minute, he referenced a song earlier. Fucking heaven is a place on earth. Fuck it. They say in heaven, love comes first. Ooh, heaven is a place on earth. Watch Kenny Omega while I masturbate. What's up, everybody? All right, and today, uh, I don't think I, I think li- this afternoon was like the first time I actually announced, well, last night on live I did, but, you know, only Jason and Leo heard that announcement, but I actually announced this afternoon that we were actually doing three-way dance goes to the movies, and as you can probably tell from the, the photo on um, uh, YouTube, we are doing Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight. Uh, which is uh, Shelby's pick. We actually let him pick because you, every now and then we got to throw Shelby a bone so he doesn't be like, fuck this, I quit. Um, yeah, I don't even get my own segments. Fuck this shit on out of here. You know? Yeah, so this... Well, I mean, you, you got the RP segments. That's kind of like your thing. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know? That's, true. that's um, not a recurring thing, though. That was like three episodes. No, I'm the one with five. my... Spare, okay, that was five episodes, but I'm the one with segments all over the place, so... That That's okay. You're allowed. Yeah. Oh. Um, okay. So yes, tonight we're reviewing Quentin Tarantino's Hateful Eight, which I think is the first movie that like me and Nick have never seen. Yeah. Probably. I oh no, wait. Yeah. I had never seen Peanut Butter Falcon. I hadn't seen movie forty three before. I wish I hadn't watched it anyway, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so but before we get to all that of course, i hadn't seen the menu either uh, yeah i think but, he meant that you and him hadn't seen yeah oh yeah oh, okay now yeah because i think like you know because me and shelby have seen movie 43 yeah both of you menu. haven't seen peanut butter falcon no and both of you haven't seen the menu no and I oh, think okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I think Shelby's seen Rat Race, but he just wasn't here for that episode. Fucking. Uh, I actually don't think I did end up watching it. Really? You never you yeah. gotta watch that movie. That oh, movie is brilliant. I definitely didn't watch it like when we were supposed to. I think that was when my I think that was when my dad passed, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. So I think yeah. I just ran out. Of, I I just I had a lot going on, and yeah, I I, I might have watched it back in the day, but I don't remember watching it. That's what I mean. I think you've at least seen it, but you just weren't doing that episode with you us. You know, and speaking of yeah. that race, what the fuck happened to Amy Smart? Like, what does she do now? Oh, she, uh, a sad thing happened to her. She kissed him with a shotgun. She's dead. No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear. I was just going to say, I didn't hear about that. <laughs> no. I said that so casually, too. You know? Um. Uh, but uh, yeah, we are doing Quentin Tarantino, and um, you know, you know, let's let's have a little discussion first. Let's let's do something a little different here. So this is a Quentin Tarantino movie. You know, he doesn't, you know, put his name and you know on a lot of fucking movies. He doesn't pump out a movie every fucking year. Like, uh, is this the right? eighth movie from Quentin Tarantino? I think it is. Yeah, he doesn't have I, that many films. But uh, but but when you think of it though, the Hateful Eight, the eighth movie from Quentin yeah. Tarantino, like, yeah, there you go. yeah, I gotta. Look, I'm gonna rock a wiki on that just to be sure. Yeah, so we're that. not putting um, out shit that doesn't make sense. But speaking of Quentin Tarantino, uh, is this is, is, now Nick? Is this the only Quentin Tarantino movie you've seen, or is there others? The only two Quentin Tarantino movies I haven't seen are Four Rooms and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. One of my favorite movies ever is Pulp Fiction. I love Reservoir Dogs. I can still quote Inglorious Bastards. The Kill Bill movies are wonderful. Uh, Jackie Brown, I love that movie too. Oh, fuck, I love that movie. Up Across, across 110th Street by Bobby Womack, I love that shit too. Because that was the song you, uh, Jackie Brown's great. Uh, the, yeah, Four Rooms and Once Upon a Time, or whatever that is. 
the Hollywood movie with yeah. Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio. Those are the only two I haven't seen. And Angel- well, until until just today, actually. Yeah, that was yeah. this morning. It hit way. Um, I've seen Pulp Fiction. I've seen Death Proof. Uh, I saw That's not a Tarantino Bastards. movie. Yeah, uh, it Death is. Proof it doesn't is. count. It doesn't yeah, it count. Does. Yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. Yes, it I don't does. think so. Yes, yeah, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Okay, I stand correct. <laughs> and uh, Glorious Bastards, I think, is probably my Death favorite. Is um, then Re- Django, Django Unchained, oh, and Unchained, Django. and I think I've seen this one. This will be my third and fourth watch through because I kind of watched like a bit of it when I got home tonight too. Just yeah, I think I, I, after oh, Kill Bill Volume One, I kind of went through a phase where I'm like, oh, okay, let me let me watch some other Quentin Tarantino movies, and I dug Pulp Fiction. Yeah. I didn't understand some parts of it, but I was like, I dig this for what it is. Reservoir Dogs, I thought was pretty entertaining, <laughs> and um, I, I never got around to Jackie Brown. I never got yeah. around to that one. And um, Faithful Eight was his eighth one. Sorry to interrupt. And yes, no, Death Proof does count. I've seen Death Proof as well. Yeah, I confuse so, it because it was a double feature under the Grindhouse title with Robert Rodriguez. So yeah. I'm counting here, and technically it'd be his ninth, but I'm assuming. Kill Bill Volume One and Two count as a one movie? Essentially, yeah, because he originally filmed that as one movie. Yeah, right. It was right. too long, so they're like, "This is too long, dude. You got to split this up." That one I haven't seen either, and it's funny because every time I put it on, it's like late at night, and I'm like ready to pass out. Listen, so I've never bro, actually seen those like movies the Kill are Bill. So good. I've heard that too, and like just a little bit I've seen. They're definitely something I'd be into. No, my thing is like Kill Bill Volume One fucking amazing i mean you have lucy lou in there there's the great see the great fight with gogo who is played by i don't know her name but she's played by one of the villains in fucking battle royal fucking awesome great shit in there the second one was the biggest fucking waste of time in my goddamn life yeah you know that's where he kind of lost me the second one i only watched once like i even watched jackie brown more than i watched kill bill volume two i watched jackie brown a lot I don't have my copy anymore. I'm pretty sure an old roommate stole it, but you know. Yeah, but you know, people always sing the praises of fucking Kill Bill Volume Two, and I just Volume I just, One yeah. is definitely better. Oh, Volume One, definitely better, infinitely so, better. As as yeah. far as I'm concerned, shit. And that's another one a lot of people sing the praises of, but I never, I never watched it. And that's in, you know, you two just sung the praise of Inglorious Bastards. I never watched it. It's probably my favorite Tarantino the film. Yeah, I, I think I did too. The theater. And the one thing, like, I mean, I loved it. It's very, I mean, it's dark subject matter. For me, the subject matter of that movie alone is very hard for me to deal with anyway, because I've been to the museum, the Holocaust Museum in Washington. I've been to one in Toronto. I've met a Holocaust survivor. That shit's hard for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, it's just one of those things. And so, but in Glorious Bastards, I watched that in the theater. It's very good. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um. But yeah, after Kill Bill 2, he kind of lost me. That's why I just kind of gave up. And then I read about the ending to Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and I'm just like, this guy's fucking lost his goddamn mind. Oh, so he considers Kill Bill 1 and 2 to be a single movie. Yeah. Um, Because like when he announced that he was doing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the way that it was announced, it was like, oh, he's doing a movie about Charles Manson. And I'm like, yeah. right on. You know, Charles Manson's a kooky dude. You know, I can get behind this and shit like that. And then I read the ending to this movie and I was just like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a fucking minute here. What the fuck happened? I don't know. I know Nick hasn't seen it, but have you seen Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Shelby? No, I haven't. I actually just found out about this movie today when I was looking him up. Yeah, uh, I won't spoil it then, but I just read the ending. I was like, this is fucking nuts. This guy's lost his goddamn mind. And I'm like, people are just like, Quentin Tarantino, he's such a genius. He's so awesome. And I'm like, yeah, maybe with Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs and fucking Kill Bill, but th- fucking this? Like, <laughs> after one reading that the, ending? One of the best fucking scenes in movie history for me is the scene in Reservoir Dogs where fucking stuck in the middle with you is playing stuck in the middle and he lobs buddy's ear off yeah. yeah i know it's very graphic but just like the way that whole thing progresses is just like this is fucking brilliant i don't tip <laughs> i don't tip 
Oh, that's quite the cast on fucking Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Holy shit. I mean, yeah, it's a great cast, but just the the ending, especially when it sold to me as like a Charles Manson movie. And then I read the ending. I'm just like, huh? (laughs) What? Yeah. Yeah. Wrong show. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I'll have to check it out, though. But Four Rooms, yeah, that's actually what I've been meaning to see, too, uh, of his. Because I think it's like, I think it's like De- uh, Grindhouse, where, like, it's like little segments, and he directed, like, a segment. Yeah. You know? So I've been meaning to see that, too. But Death Proof was actually one that, like, when I went and saw Grindhouse in theaters, because, you know, it did so well in theaters, um, Planet Terror fucking loved it. Loved yeah. Loved Planet Terror. Yeah, stayed around for death proof, but I had to leave because I had something come up. But like at first, I was just like, I'm not digging this, right? You know? And I understand Tarantino is known for his fucking dialogue, and we'll get into some of those dialogue when we start talking about the hateful eight here. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just like, I, fucking, I'm not digging this movie. It wasn't until it came out on DVDs when I watched it again, and I was just like, okay, I get it now. Yeah, see, I watched it on DVD. I didn't see, and I didn't see Planet Terror until much later than when I saw Death Proof. Like, mm-hmm. I saw Death Proof in, it came out in 2007, so I would have seen it in, oh, shit, let me think. It was when I was taking radio. Uh, so probably mid-2008 is when I saw Death Proof, but I didn't see Planet Terror until early 2009. Oh, wow. But I actually like Death Proof. That's the thing. I thought it was good. Yeah. Yeah, the first time I watched it, I was just like, I don't get this. The only line that was really good when I first saw Death Proof was just like, this car is Death Proof, honey, but the thing about it is you really need to be sitting in my seat. That was (laughs) awesome. You know, but everything before that, I was just like, oh, God, can we get on with it, dude? (laughs) All right, so there's a little Quentin Tarantino talk there. And we're also, of course, it's a three-way dance. So, you know, we got to play a little game here. And we're going to do something a little different. Like, you, we're going to try it, you know. Hopefully it doesn't turn out like Guess Who did. Um, <laughs> oops. <laughs> that fucking failed experiment. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, we're going to play Movie Taboo. Or, like, or I guess this would be more $10,000 pyramid. Uh, so we're going to go around. We're going to each describe a movie. Uh, but we cannot say who's in the movie. We cannot name characters in the movie. Basically, we're going to terribly describe these movies and see if we can figure out what the movie is. So I always go first. Somebody else go first. All right, I'll go first. Right. Uh, so is it Good in, Burger? No. Okay. <laughs> in this movie, a lounge singer enters witness protection. Is it witless protection? Wit, no. Mm, a lounge singer enters witness protection. God, that sounds familiar, and I can't put my finger on it. Oh, oh, no, that's not it. God damn, I keep thinking of the mask and Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but they never it's enter. Neither of those. Yeah, ne- they never enter witness protection though. A lounge singer. To add to it a little bit, uh, upon entering witness protection, undertakes a new profession. When you say lounge singer, you mean like... Like Las uh, Vegas lounge singer. Okay, okay. Like, here's a ho- here's like a casino oh, hotel type oh, deal. Oh, oh, sister act. Yeah, there you go. There it is. Oh. Like, Wait a minute, this sounds familiar, and I can't fucking put my finger on it. It was hard to come up with even that clue. I was like, how do I not, like, really give this away? Like, without With naming... this protection was good, yeah, because if you would have said, yeah. like, Dunnery, then yeah, it would have been a dead giveaway. So that was good. And then know. said, like, with a new... And then gets a new profession. Like, that was the best I could think of. That was like, good. So. I'll give you that one. That was good. Made me think. Hmm. You go next. Sure, go ahead. Uh, me? Yeah, you. Okay. I oh. think mine are gonna be pretty easy. Um, oh. <laughs> uh, in this movie, a small. Is town... it Smokey and the Bandit? 
No. Okay. In this movie, a small town gets taken over by infected. Oh, shit. That, uh, shit. that could be fucking thousands of them. <laughs> um, the infected are created by an evil corporation. Cloverfield? No. 28 days later. No. Oh. Small town created by an evil. I don't think it was a small town, but I'm going to say Resident Evil. Yeah, so I said small town because it was filmed in Sudbury, which is a small town um, ish. But yeah, Resident Evil. Oh, OK. <clears throat> um, I have three written down here, but I'm going to pick one here. Um. All right. I do have two more, by the way. Okay. Uh, we'll save some for later. Yeah, yeah I was going to yeah. save, save them. Um, and this one here, um, uh, a CEO systematically kills people on tour of their business. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> the greatest horror movie of all time. <laughs> shit, you saw right through that shit too, man. Fuck. Um let me do one more. Hold on. Let's see if you get this one. Um Oh shit. I didn't think about I I just wrote down the movies. I didn't think about how to describe these. Oh me too, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um so like hold on, let me think of this one, because like this one oh god. Okay. Uh, okay. Nine people in a house. Nine people are in a house trying to solve a murder. Clue? God damn it! Damn! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna write some more down. <laughs> that's a good movie. I like that movie. Man. Oh, that's a great fucking movie. I don't yeah. even know if I've seen that one either. Oh my god, you haven't seen Clue? No, I don't think so. Dude, get off your ass, man. Uh, I'll give another one now. Okay, fucking... go ahead. Yeah, let's do it. So, um, a professional athlete is wrongfully accused of a crime he didn't commit. The hurricane. Damn it! Fuck, I had that one too. <laughs> I was about to say the longest yard for some reason. I don't know why. I'd never seen that one. It's a good movie. A very good movie. I like Denzel Washington as an actor, though. Like he's just Denzel really is the fucking man. Yeah. American Gangster. I fucking love that movie, man. I think he took over for Samuel oh. L. Jackson at one point. To me, I anyway. would. I still would love to see a movie where it's Denzel Washington, Morgan Freeman, Samuel L. Jackson, and like. I don't know, Eddie Murphy as like a... The old black a, guys? As like a mafia type deal. <laughs> I don't know if Eddie Murphy... Well, I guess he could kind of play the part. Yeah, he He's just it. kind of odd when you put him with the other three. I don't know. I, I couldn't think of another one. To, Wesley Snipes, maybe. But... Couldn't be any weirder than seeing Samuel L. Jackson in a Saw movie. <laughs> I suppose that's true. Snakes on a plane is fucking something else, too. I like that movie, but fuck. All right, shall we do one more and then we'll do the review? All right, I only have one more since Nick did my other one, but um, a convict is sent to an island to fight to the death. The condemned. Yeah. Oh, shit. I wouldn't have got there that quick. Really? <laughs> no. Well, during the review, Dude, maybe... I guess Peanut Butter Falcon for Harold and Kumar go to White Castle in the group chat. So think about that's, that. That's true. For those of you listening at home, we when I was explaining this game to him, because like I don't want to do to keep keep doing the same fucking games over and over. You know, that's why like every week now we kind of switch it up. I I always text these guys like, "What do y'all feel like doing tonight?" You know. Um, so uh, I was just like, "All right, let's play this," and you know, this is how it works and shit. You know. Um, and I was like, for example, this is the clue. And I was like, two people are on the hunt for food while getting sidetracked with misadventures. And fucking right away, Nick is just like, peanut butter falcon. I'm like, all right, good guess. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. But no. Like, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. You know? So, 
All right, so let's get into our review here. This is going to be a quick episode tonight, man. We're mm. going to be out the fucking door here, you know? <laughs> um, hey, the the movie review we... episodes get quick. Fucking, or we get lots of fucking views for those, so. I know, yeah. If it's quicker, but it's quicker. Uh, but if it's quicker is, episode, it'll be fucking like everybody will listen to that shit. Yeah, you know, like Rat Race did, you know, well for us, and Menu did really well. And then, mm-hmm. what was the what was the movie before the Menu we did? Oh, uh, was that or um not wrestling movie forty three? Movie forty three. No, what about back? Oh, Backyard Dogs was technically a wrestling episode. Yeah, yeah that was a wrestling, wrestling episode. episode. But yeah. still, that yeah. did pretty well because people mm-hmm. that I think that one was actually doing better on. The other platforms than it was on YouTube, I think. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, before we get into our review of the Hateful Eight, and I can tell Shelby to suck it, um, <laughs> uh, suck my black dingus. <laughs> uh, I gotta give us a quick shout out to uh, the great people over at MoviesRUSA.net. Uh, who sponsored a three-way dance wrestling podcast. And if you don't know what moviesrusa.net is, they're a great website where you can head on over and find hard-to-find TV shows, hard-to-find movies that have either never been released on physical media, such as Blu-ray and DVD, or haven't been released on those uh, platforms in quite a long time. Uh, Don't want to get Netflix, don't want to get HBO Max, don't want, like, 50 streaming services at all. You just want to pick and choose which ones. Well, they have some of the best titles from those services on that website and you can get those on blu-ray dvd by special request for movies only unfortunately not for tv shows uh like just the other day i just bought um i bought another one from i know they're a sponsor and i bought another they released the entire series of the classic uh uh kid show vr troopers Oh, V R. Yeah. V R. True. Post. I saw that and I was like, "Fucking oh. sold. I'm buying that. I- I'm not even gonna wait. I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy that." Uh, but they also have countless other shows. Over, uh, they're up to 3,500 titles to choose from. Um, so you can head on over there and get those for a great, reasonable price. And if you're looking at those prices and you're like, "Hey, that's just not reasonable enough for me," well, hey, we're gonna help you out here because tax season is upon us and you're about to get that fat fucking refund. Well, in America, I don't know how that shit works in Canada. Um, at least in America. So you're about to get that fat fucking refund. So you can use our checkout code three way, the word or the number, either one, they work and you'll save 50% on your purchase. And if you spend over $50, you're going to get free shipping on your purchase, spend under $50 and you're only going to pay $5 shipping. You can upgrade that to expedited shipping for only $7 and 50 cents, which, Hey, either way, it's a great deal. And he ships really fast. Uh, but international listeners, we know you're listening. We know I, I read that shit. I let these guys know who's listening and shit. So Hungary, Canada, India, United Arab Emirates, France, Germany, fucking Paraguay. No, not Paraguay. I'm kidding. Um, but hey, maybe soon, you know. Uh, you guys can also get moviesrusa.net delivered to you because they do ship international. The only bad thing is that spend 50, get free shipping, doesn't work for you. I know it's unfortunate, but you can still get Movies R USA shipped to you. You can still use checkout code three away and save 50%. All we ask is that you pay the exact shipping price and it will be shipped right to your door. Anything you want. So if you're region coded, Netflix, and you don't want to get a VPN, but you want to watch The End of the Fucking World, which is a great show. Watch mm. it. Um, great 16 episodes of television that you'll never regret watching. Uh, you can get that on MoviesRUSA.net. Get it shipped right to your door. 50% off. So head on over to MoviesRUSA.net today and uh, Trooper Transform your Blu-ray collection today. All right. So let's get into it here. And we're actually doing this review a little differently here because this this was, you know, usually with some of the movies we review here, um, you know, this it's usually in my realm of like uh what's the word I'm looking for here? Obscurity. Uh, yeah. You know, like I have an idea of what I'm getting into. This is one of the first movies we reviewed for this show that I had no fuck idea what I was getting into. You know? <laughs> Uh, because the two movies that sh- Shelby decided to do were The Hateful Eight and The Legend of Buster Scruggs, which I like, uh, Buster Scruggs. Yeah. Uh, whatever. Which <laughs> I, you know, looking at those two movies, uh, you know, I didn't say it in the group chat, but I was just like, oh, well, I kind of did in a way, but I was just like, okay, I really regret letting him pick the movie now. 
back. Because I was just like, these are the two we landed. Because I figured Smokey and the Bandit was going to be one. And then, like, yeah, I, don't I know. thought about it. And then I was like, I don't know what other fucking movie you'll probably think of. Like, you know, but like, I was like, these are the fucking two he landed on. I was like, I'll tell you what, the next time I have a choice, I'll give you my three favorite movies. Oh, Smokey and the Bandit 1, 2, and 3? No. Smokey and the Bandit, <laughs> uh, The Warriors, and Small Soldiers. Oh. That is a weird combination. Damn. I don't even I know if I really that, like Small Soldiers I've got anymore, a weird it was combo my favorite though, movie when too. I was a kid, so. <clears throat> I have a weird top three, too. Mine's A League of Their Own, fucking... Um, what what is my top three? A League of the Rome, My Blueberry Nights, and White Oleander. So I can't. Mine's fucking Back to the Future, Dazed and Confused, and fucking Good Burger. Well, either Sister Act or Good Burger, I guess. No. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So I just I just sent a gif of like. Goodfellas is that... also fucking wonderful. I just sent a uh, gif of like Homer with that clapping monkey in his head because I was just like, <laughs> I, it fucking doesn't matter which one you pick because like I'm fucked either way on this one. <laughs> so they left it up to Nick, and Nick landed on the Hateful Eight. Uh, so that's what we're reviewing it's here. It's honestly probably the better movie. I do really like the Ballad of Buster Scruggs, but this is probably the better movie. So uh, I will say the movie opened up with uh, – apparently this was a Weinstein production. And uh, quick question, whatever happened to Harvey, Harvey Weinstein? You don't hear much about him anymore. No, I yeah, wonder 16 why. 16 more years in prison. <laughs> yeah. This was the last film he made with him, too. Fuck him. He should rot in prison, that greasy bastard. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and the great thing about this was I was able to do this like a pay-per-view because, like, this is broken up into <clears throat> chapters. Mm-hmm. You know, so this was kind of good. So chapter part of the four, reason, sorry to d- interrupt you, but part of the reason I chose this one, too, is because it's kind of like the menu in, like, it has a twist in it, and you don't really know where it's going. So I thought you might enjoy that. I didn't know where it was going until the fucking end. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I will say there is one part coming up here that like I wrote down a question and I was just like, what the fuck? And then later on, they actually did answer that question. I was kind of shocked. They were pretty Um, good with answering questions in this film for the most part. Uh, So the plot. uh, So for the people listening at home, all three of you, uh, I'm going to be reading the plot. So here's how we're going to do this. All right. Uh, just to make it easier, because the plot on fucking Wikipedia is, is not that long, you know? So the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to read the plot, and then we'll just go back and fucking talk about this. Right? <laughs> Everybody good with that? Yeah. All right. Here we go. The plot is, in 1877, bounty hunter and African-American Union veteran Major Marquise Warren, played by Samuel L. Jackson, is heading to Red Red Rock, Wyoming, with three bounty corpses, which, you know, I will say, I like how he just has them stacked up in the fucking, <laughs> you know. In the back of his carriage. Though. Yeah, Here exactly. His horse gives out and is faced with an incoming blizzard. Warren hitches a ride on a stagecoach driven by O.B. Jackson, which there's a great joke with him later I'll mention. Aboard is bounty hunter John Roof, played by uh, Kurt Russell, which it took me a minute to realize that was Kurt Russell. He is so good in this. He was probably my favorite character in the yeah. whole movie. And, like, I guess you could go on and we'll talk about, like, yeah. how much of a dis- devious bastard and asshole he is. But <clears throat> um, da, 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 Where am I at? Uh, and he is handcuffed to fugitive Crazy Daisy Domergu, whom he has taken to Red Rock to be hanged. Ruth and Warren had previously bonded over Warren's personal letter from Abraham Lincoln. Um, he's so he's so like he's so in love with that letter too. Like he just always wants to read it. Oh man, that Mary Todd man. <laughs> and then when Dharma Hugh fucking like what she spits on it or something, he like fucking punches her in the face. My oh. jaw hit the ground when she did that. <laughs> yeah, when she spit on it, I was like, <gasps> I was like <laughs> oh, uh, me too. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Uh, Chris Mannix. Lost Chris Mannix, who claims to be Red Rock's new sheriff, also joins them uh, during the trip. See, that's what I mean. There's like uh, with the plot here. Sometimes you'll read plots on Wikipedia and it's very detailed. This one just says Chris Mannix, who is lost, claims to be Red Rock's new sheriff. There's so much more to that fucking scene. Yeah, well, he punches. So (laughs) 
<laughs> John Ruth punches fucking Daisy out of the goddamn carriage. And because he's fucking cuffed to her, he goes out of the carriage too. And that's when they find fucking Maddox. No, it wasn't just John like... Ruth that punched him. It was fucking... Oh, uh, it was... Uh, yeah, that's yeah. right. He, yeah, Cause okay. Because she spit on the fucking ladder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, he punches her, and then they both go flying, and he has OB stop the carriage. So he can go retrieve the letter, not to actually check on those two, but to retrieve the I letter. I think I got confused because John Ruth punches the shit out of her multiple times. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because there's a good line that I'll mention here. In a, <laughs> um, you know, that Ruth learns about the Confederate bounty on Warren's head for breaking out and setting fire to a prisoner of war camp. They seek refuge from the blizzard at Minnie's haberdashery, which... I have so many questions about that later. Yeah, uh, yeah, me too. Uh, greeting them is Bob, a Mexican who says Minnie is away and left him in charge. The other lodgers, Senior Bob, Senior Bob, Senior Bob. <laughs> the other, the other lodgers are Deputy Sheriff Oswaldo Mowbray, Cowboy Joe Gage, and elderly Confederate General Sanford Smithers, who is planning to erect a cenotaph. For his uh, oh okay okay, uh, for his missing son, suspicious. Roof disarms all but Warren. Um, see, like damn, they skipped right to just him disarming everybody. Yeah, yeah, they did skip a lot of stuff there from like the conversation that uh, yeah, holy shit, Bob and uh, and uh, Marquis had it uh, in the in the stable about mm -hmm. Marquis like really skeptical because he's like, I've never seen you before and like that kind of comes up later um yeah. and like where's Minnie? and it's like oh she she went up to see her her folks in the mountains and he's like she never mentioned that that she had a mother and senior bob's like everybody's got a mother and he's just like yeah i guess that's true <laughs> yeah. later at the dinner table manic surprises oh i'm sorry surmises i'm sorry you forgot and to more... mention the door too which becomes a huge part of the fucking movie. Yeah, that's that's actually one of my questions that gets answered. Okay. Yeah, it's actually really fucking funny how that happened. Yeah. Um, da -da -da -da. Uh, Maddox surmises and Warren concedes that the Lincoln letter is false. Warren responds to Ruth's disappointment by saying he forged the letter uh, by saying his forged letter buys him leeway with whites, something Ruth silently acknowledges he never would have given. Warren without. Oh, and he was Ruth was pissed that he lied to him too. Mm -hmm. Like I never thought about, I never thought that way about you people, but I guess it's true. <laughs> there's a there's a great line with the N word later that cracked me up. Um, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Warren puts one of his guns next to Sanford and provokes him by claiming that he sexually assaulted and murdered Smithers' son, which, you know, I. You know, there's sometimes there, there are scenes in a movie that kind of catch you off guard. This is one of those moments. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Yeah, Made him like, strip down naked and fucking walk. Which, okay, the like that, I was just like, okay, he's torturing him. I was just like, yeah. that's, a, that's a unique way of torture. But he was just like, I had him suck my dick for a blank. And I'm like, wait a big part? My big black <laughs> thing is. Yeah, I'm and like. His face while he's getting the blowjob, too. It's just fucking incredible. He starts <laughs> laughing. <laughs> I was just like, what the fuck is this movie, man? It's like, hard to say whether he actually did all of that or any of that, or if he was just trying to get a rise out of him. Because, I mean, they came to blows. They were almost about to shoot each other earlier. And the hangman said, hey, if you shoot him here in cold blood, you know, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be hung yourself or hang. Yeah, yourself. that is true. Yeah. Right. And then uh, uh, John Ruth is like, "Yep, you can you can push him down the stairs, but you can't shoot old geezers." <laughs> when the enraged Smithers reaches for the gun, Warren kills him in revenge for ordering the slaughter of black prisoners of war at Baton Rouge. Mm. Um, that guy problems. cared more about horses than black people. He, he made it like a parent too he was fucking uber racist um some coffee Look at that mustache and you could tell he was probably <laughs> uber racist at that well time. Holy fuck. not to well, mention damn, if we're going by the mustaches and ruth was the biggest racist in the fucking room well <laughs> ruth's just the biggest asshole in the room realistically 
true. Uh, some coffee is brewed and is laced with poison. Ruth and Jackson drink it, and Jackson dies. But Ruth lives long enough to attack Daisy, who then shoots him dead with his own gun. Warren yeah. disarms Domergrew, leaving her shackled to Ru- Ruth's corpse and holds the others at gunpoint. He is joined by Mannix, whom Warren trusts because he nearly drank the poison coffee, which I, I, I'll, I'll mention it later, but like I still didn't trust him at that point. No. no. Um, I, I trusted that he wasn't like part of the original gang at this point. I, I thought he had something to do with it there, but I... I, I I didn't, well, I'll get into it. It's hard for me to say, though, because the first time I watched this movie was, like, shortly after it came out, so. Hmm. Examining the evidence and revealing Minnie's hatred for Mexicans, Warren <laughs> deduces that Bob is lying and promptly execute him, executes him. When Warren threatens to kill Daisy, Gage admits that he poisoned the coffee. An unknown man hiding under the floorboard shoots Warren in the groin, leaving him unable to walk. Uh, Mowbray pulls a 32 pistol from his coat, shoots Mannix, who returns fire and fatally wounds him. We then get a flashback that shows Bob Mo- uh, fucking Oswaldo. I'm gonna, I cannot say that last name properly. <laughs> Bob, Oswaldo, Gage, and Daisy's brother arriving at the lodge hours earlier. They gun down Minnie, her two servants, and all but one of her customers. Smithers is spared when he agrees to stay silent while the gr- I have so many questions about this later. Um, Smithers is spared what, when he agrees to stay silent while the group prepares to spring Daisy from Ruth's custody. The bodies are hastily thrown down the well outside, which I'm pretty sure that's not going to be good for the water. Um, I don't think they really care. <laughs> Although they were making coffee, and I guess there was a comment earlier about how it tasted like shit, too. That's true, too. Yeah. Uh, I actually have a comment about the coffee. That's funny that you say that. Um, once they finish cleaning the store, Jody hides in the cellar. Uh, in the present, Mannix and Warren, both seriously wounded, hold Daisy, Gage, and uh, uh, Oswaldo at gunpoint. When they threaten to kill Daisy, Jody surrenders and is executed by Warren, which that's another one I didn't see coming right away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because Mann- he's a famous actor, too. Like, he didn't get much screen time, really. Channing well, Tatum, it was like a cameo role, and I was surprised yeah, was like by how Anne, well he did. Mm-hmm. It was Anne Channing Tatum, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, the surviving gang members offer Mannix a deal. They claim 15 hired guns are waiting in Red Rock in case the rescue attempt fails. If Mannix kills Warren, they will spare him and allow him to collect the bounty on the dying uh, Oswaldo and the deceased Bob. Warren shoots uh, Oswaldo dead, and he and Mannix uh, then kill Gage. Warren tries to shoot Daisy, but he is out of bullets, which, okay. That one Shitty got, timing. Yeah. He asks Mannix for his gun, but Mannix refuses, waiting to hear Daisy out. After deducing that Daisy lied about the hired guns, Mannix faints from the, faints from the blood loss. Warren watches helplessly as Daisy frees herself. By hacking off Root's arm. I have a great question about that later. Mm. Um, Before she can shoot Warren, Mannix regains consciousness and wounds her. As he aims for the killing shot, the two wounded men... Oh, no. Warren persuades his ally to hang her in honor of Ruth, who is known as the Hangman, for always bringing in his bounties and alive to the gallows. The two wounded men succeed in hanging Daisy from the rafters as they lie dying... Mannix reads aloud Warren's fake Lincoln letter, complimenting him on his attention to detail. All right, so there's the plot for you. Let's uh, let's pull a Quentin Tarantino. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's start at chapter one, uh, which um, I believe it was Roof. Roof, one of the first lines was like, "Hold it, there, black fella." I was like, "No, oh, that's mm-hmm. that's a great howdy." <laughs> and, well, it gets worse than that. Yeah, and then he says like, "Howdy, N word." Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Um, and then, like, that girl, that uh, Domaru, she, like, does a snot rocket, which I was like, mm, sexy. Yeah, yeah, she's uh, definitely classy. Uh, I seriously thought fucking, well, in a way, he was right, but, like, I seriously thought Samuel L. Jackson or whatever. I kept writing SLJ, Samuel L. Jackson. I thought yeah. Samuel L. Jackson was trying to trick fucking Ruth. 
to oh, get so, it to the cabin. I, I thought oh, he was just trying to yeah. do something more. Yeah. Because yeah, I, I didn't know what I was getting. My, see, you got to understand. I'm not a big Western guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's like, yeah, one, I could there's like that. one, two westerns that I really like. One being Maverick, one being the oh, what is it, the the Quick and the Dead, and like the last like fucking thirty minutes of the remake of the Three Ten to Yuma. That's mm. it in the fucking list. So like when you suggested this movie, I was like, God oh, damn, I gotta watch a fucking western and shit. I did not expect a fucking a fucking who done it in a cabin. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so like I was fucking mind blown of what I was getting myself into here. Yeah. And then like when I found that it was two hours and fifty five fuck minutes long, I was like, is he out of his goddamn mind? <laughs> you know? So I was like, fuck this. I'm gonna watch half tonight and fucking half the next day and shit. Then I'll be done with it and shit. And then I'm watching the whole fucking movie in one sitting because I was just so entranced as to what's going on. Yeah. Uh, it draws you in really well. It did. Um yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, Ruth, uh, Kurt Russell, he had a great line. He was just like, you know what? And he tells the girl, he was like, you know what? Me and you need like a code system. And that's like, when I elbow you in the face, that means shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> God, he was so on point in this fucking like my, film. That was one of my favorite lines. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mentioned this earlier. I put gasp. I wrote down the word gasp. Yeah. When uh, she spit on the letter, and then S.O. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson spit on her. Which yeah, meant, he got out of the cab and retrieved the letter, then spit on her. <laughs> uh. Anybody else want to add anything about chapter one? No. Uh, not really. I mean, just the introduction of all the characters is great, and especially having this band of characters in the in the um in the caravan or car- or carriage or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, the the convict, the guy who's supposed to be the sheriff of Red Rock, who's inherently part of the South and very racist. And then, you know, the black guy and then the fucking guy who's bringing Domahue in, the hangman. Like, that was just an interesting cast or char- amount of characters to be in that. And, it, like, he did not want to allow anybody in there, but he has a soft spot for people, I guess, when it comes to, like, the law and stuff. Um, chapter two, I was so entranced. Oh, chapter two, sorry, chapter two. I was so entranced in the fucking dialogue mm-hmm. with, like, you know, him finding out that he burnt down like a fucking prisoner of war camp and all this shit. That mm-hmm. I was just like, all right, I'm interested. This is what really like hooked me, and I was just like, I was just paying attention and shit. And like again, like it's these days. And let me let's just go into a tangent here. Um, these days it's very hard for me. Whether it be a fucking hour and a half movie or fucking three hours like this one, it's very hard for me to sit through a movie and not like, oh, let me pause this and go get something to eat. Oh, like, fuck, let me yeah. fuck off on my phone while the movie's playing or let me play I have a hard movie. time, like, not falling asleep during a movie a lot yeah. of times these days. And, like, a lot of times these days, like, I have the PS4 in the basement, so I'll put on, like, a movie in the background and just play the PS4. So this was a very rare occurrence where, like, I I think I, like, checked my phone a couple times, but it wasn't like, oh, let me just do a bunch of shit on my phone while the movie plays. Yeah. So, like, this movie really had my fucking attention. Yeah. Um, the only thing that really stuck out to me in fucking Chapter 2 was, like, uh, she kept, like, t- the g- Doma Guru or whatever. She kept hitting fucking Ruth, and then she he's like, all right, all right, here, fine. And he gives her, like, this piece of jerky. But she chewed on it. She's so goddamn long. Was it jerky or gum? yeah well jerky back in the day i can imagine would be very tough i mean it's generally pretty tough in like nowadays if you get like actual jerky because like the shit the jack link stuff you buy at the grocery store really isn't like real jerky so it's delicious though is it though i don't know it it tastes like like candy to me i don't know it's like candy it tastes like yeah yeah it just tastes wrong with you taste caramelized holy fuck Tastes like candy. Fuck off. Join us next week on our new podcast, Jerk Talk. <laughs> All right. Next is chapter three, which is where the majority of the movie happens here. Minnie's ha- haberdashery here. Mm-hmm. Um, see, this is where the question came out. So this is the question I had, and I'll mention where it gets answered earlier. But, like, you see Bob the Mexican come out, right? Yeah. And then later on, we see them like, oh, you have to kick the door in, kick the door in. So I'm just like, how did Bob get the fucking door open so easily? 
you know? Yeah. And then that question actually gets answered later. So Well, um, there was a bit of a goof in here too, because when they pull up in the carriage, you can kind of hear the door latch. Yeah. Which I guess was just it was just a fuck up in the film. But like realistically that door didn't latch properly. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, yeah, I think so, yeah. But I think they yeah. also show in the flashback later that we'll get to that they sh- kind of shot it, too. Yeah, yeah, they did, yeah. yeah. Um, I like how Ruth comes in, talks a whole bunch of fucking smack to whoever's there. Right? <laughs> and then he's just like, wait, no, no, he's like, this coffee's fucking shit. Yeah. Dumps it out. Wait a minute, stay with me here. Yeah. Dumps it out, and he's just like, well water? They're like, right there. He gets the fucking water. Coffee beans are like over there. Gets the coffee beans, puts it on the fucking stove or heater, whatever fucking it was. Talks some more smack to the fucking hangman guy, the Oswaldo guy. Yeah. That goes on for like five fucking minutes. <laughs> yeah. And then the guy's like, oh, would you like a drink? And then they fucking leave. So you went through all that bullshit for the coffee just to not drink it. Well, hey, once he found out there was liquor in the establishment, he didn't care about coffee anymore. Fucking, that irritated me. <laughs> I was annoyed. <laughs> you know, it's like when somebody was just like hey can you do this for me and you're like i can't right now hold on like please can you do this for me like fuck hold on i'll do it like can you do this for me like fine fuck and then you do it and then they come behind you and do it themselves like really <laughs> um and then he goes and meets everybody in the room and like this is before i knew the twist but like he mm. goes to gage and he's just like what are you doing he's like i'm writing my life story and he's like, all right, what else are you doing? He's like, going to meet my mom for Christmas. And I wrote down, I was just like, Gage ain't making it home for Christmas, is he? Which, in a way, I was kind of right. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> they were all talking about, their, um, doesn't somebody in your group have a letter from Lincoln? And they're like, yeah, the, uh, the N-word in the stable. The yeah. N-word in the stable yeah. has a letter from Lincoln? The N word in the stable. <laughs> and then Maddox is just like, bullshit. <laughs> You're telling me that the N word in the stable has a has letter, letter from Lincoln. President Lincoln. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. Um, did it, did it. Also, when Maddox comes in, he starts telling the hangman how he's the new sheriff. In fucking Red Rock, and fucking um, John's just like, for shit. And he says <laughs> it again, for shit. Uh, he was just on point in this film, man. He was so good. This one I called, like, Bob and um, Samuel Jackson were having that conversation. I just wrote down, Bob did something to Minnie, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, He's my very, favorite, like, shifty. My favorite fucking line, uh, in a way, just the delivery of it. Uh, when Samuel L. Jackson and the, the old timer were having their first interaction. Yeah. And the old timer was just like, well, you tell that N word that I said. Da, 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 da. And then Samuel L. Jackson was like, you tell that old geezer. I said this. And then he says it again. He was like, you tell that N word. And then Mannix stands up and he's like, uh, major N word. I'm like, oh, that <laughs> fucking killed me. I fucking cracked up so hard. <laughs> you know, I kind of wish when I watched this movie again, I did a count on the N-word. Because I don't know how many times they said it, but it felt like they were saying it like every two seconds. <laughs> and there was only one black guy in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Other than like... He stood, up, he stood up and he was just like, major N-word. I was like... <laughs> yeah. Fucking killed me. I uh, started to get pissed because like this like black guy is questioning a fucking... Um, uh, a but war he said hero it so is straight mine. Face. He didn't yeah. say it like with ire and some shit. Yeah. You know? Like, uh, just for the people at home, I'm saying this with context of the film, but he was just like, Major Nigger. I was like, what the? He just said that. With yeah. Like, no ire. No, like, I'm pissed off. Just. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, he was in the war too, right? So they're just. I guess, they're yeah. yeah. And then they're like, okay, OB, you got to go outside. And they're like, why? He was like, you have you already have your jacket on. I'm like, everybody else's jacket's on too. It's fucking freezing. Yeah. That was when he took all the, the weapons, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, he told me he had to go outside. <laughs> that was my to... favorite. That was another part where it was just like, um, uh, I think, is that chapter four that happens? Hold on. 
Oh yeah, yeah, that's chapter four. Okay, I'll bring that up. Um da -da -da -da. and then when oh yeah, when they were sitting at that dinner eating the stew and um they find that out the stew wisdom. looked gross as shit. I don't know who makes yellow. I was kind of into it, man. Was, yeah. That looks good, man. <laughs> the way that John was eating it just made it worse. Like, he's uh, just like, like an animal. steam coming off of it and shit. I, was I mean, like, if you were stuck in the mountains, it would probably do. <laughs> yeah, you know? um, but, like, when he was, like, talking about him, about the Lincoln letter, like, so, that's a letter from Abraham Lincoln. I was like, Samuel Jackson's going to shoot this motherfucker. <laughs> you know, like. Maddox. Yeah, that's yeah. why I, I was like, he's gonna shoot this fucking guy. Um, when he said, "Oh, um, I know what day your boy died," and I was like, "Huh?" Yeah, the day he met me. I was like, "Ooh." Yeah. You know. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, and during that whole torture scene, I did notice one thing with it. He was just like, "You know what I did to your boy? First, I stripped him down naked, and I had him walk all the way." And I noticed one thing: at least he got to let him wear shoes. Uh, snowshoes. I don't know. Did he have shoes? Yeah. Well, I guess he would probably just fall in the snow and not be able to walk. But I guess if he's torturing him, what's the difference? <laughs> and I wrote down just what dot 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 the dot 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 <laughs> fuck. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, that's that's you know. Made him I, suck I on his black dingus. I take it that in the context of this movie, Samuel L. Jackson is not gay. Well, but, no. But do you know how much hatred you'd have to... Listen, I have hatred for a lot of fucking people in my life. Yeah. But do you know how much hatred you would have to have for somebody? The fucking... Not, torturing somebody? Maybe. Right? But do you Maybe. know how much hatred I would fucking have to have for somebody to not only torture him, but then to force him to fucking suck my dick? Well, you're putting a lot of trust in there, too, because obviously this guy doesn't like you either. So, like, he might just bite it off. Yeah, but but Oof. you also got to you also got to think he was under the false pretenses that, like, if I do this, I get a blanket. I'll get warm and shit. Yeah. If anybody believed that in that scenario, I don't know if I if they're very bright. <laughs> I don't know. I just this guys made you walk miles naked in the snow for hours. And yeah. you believe he's actually going to give you a blanket. And a blanket wouldn't actually do and anything at that point anyway. Suck your dick and suck his dick too. Like it's not even just it's making you walk for hours in the snow for a blanket. Now he's making you suck his big black dangus. <laughs> Cause I'm just like, well, like I just I I get that he did not like the fucking guy, the the fucking old timer. You know, yeah. I, I don't remember all the fucking character names. I came in with my own character names, um, except for Gates. That was the, the name of the fucking. Yeah, yeah, Smithers. yeah, that's right. Yeah. So I'm just like, I understand that he didn't like him, but like, did you hate him that much that you made his son suck your dick? Like, I just didn't get the well, hatred, the hatred eater on that. Because he was the one that took out a number of African Americans during the time of the war or some shit. Still, but did it's, you fucking make him suck your dick? It's also hard to. Like, okay, uh, wait, 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 wait. Time out, time out. All okay. right, Nick. Nick, hypothetically, this is all hypothetical. For some reason, I come to Canada and I fucking kill every single fucking member of your family in cold blood for no goddamn reason whatsoever. No reason. Just do it and fucking peace out. You come and find me, hunt me down, and fucking do the same thing Samuel L. Jackson did to this guy in the fucking movie. Would it end with me, uh, you forcing me to suck your dick? No, it would probably end with me dismembering you and hiding your body parts all across the state of Illinois. I rest my face. Or I don't Iowa, know why Illinois, like, but okay. <laughs> Iowa or whatever the fuck. <laughs> I rest um, my face. You know, it's like, really like, hard to say, don't though. Get why that was the end game. It's really hard to say, though, whether he did any of that. Because when he walked in that room, they had fought at the same battle. And... You know, uh, Smithers had, had admitted to him that he sent black people in to die, uh, basically. Like, he thought that the horses were more important and they couldn't even get the horses out. So mm -hmm. it's hard to say whether he actually did any of that or if he was just but, trying to get a rise out of him so he could kill him. But he knew Because he laid name. a pistol down next to him, hoping that he'd fucking try and shoot him. But he yeah, knew his but... son's name. What's that? Yeah. He knew his son's name. Yeah, but wasn't... Uh, didn't uh, the Smithers mention the name to... Um, no. 
uh, what's his name earlier? Uh, Mannix. He may have, but maybe he yeah. didn't. Well, but that conversation was very loud. Like, Mannix was, like, just trying to, like, fucking get a rise out of... I think but he was trying to get a rise. why had that conversation and why do what he did with Smithers if, like, in laying the gun down and everything, if he didn't already know this shit? Because he wanted him... To, he wanted Smithers to try and shoot he him. He wanted so he Smithers to go for the first move so he could kill yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So it's hard to say how much of that did happen, but it is possible. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying, though. If it did happen, like, why yeah. was that the end game is, is my big question there. I don't so think after, it did. after he shoots him and nobody moved or anything. The only thing I wrote down was like, uh, so does anybody want fruit or dessert? <laughs> Ruth like, what, do you, what, do you say, what do you say after that shit, you know? <laughs> you just sit there and drink brandy. I guess, you know. Mm. Uh yeah, chapter Samuel four now. Which, just sits there drinking. Chapter four now, which I'm like, why the fuck is there a narrator now? Because they Who needed to the explain this one. It was actually uh Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, that was really? Quentin. Yeah. 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 They had oh. to explain that Montague or whatever saw who poisoned the coffee, and that was really the only way to do it, I guess. Bill. Daisy. Yeah, you could you could have fucking filmed that in a way where fucking, I guess you could have. You know, um, oh yeah, here's the 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 joke I like where earlier Ob's just like I am never going out there again. And they're like, well, they decided to get Smithers' body out of there. They drew straws as he will go outside. Ob lost. <laughs> <laughs> Ob and Gage, right? They're the ones who had to take them yeah. out. I think it was yeah. yeah. And then this is when like I I was just I wrote down my money is on the sheriff. That's who I thought poisoned the coffee. No. Even though he was going to drink it. I was like, I still think it's you, fuckface. You know? <laughs> no. Um, uh, oh, <laughs> I just wrote down the line, I'm getting, then get. <laughs> when, when I think he was just like, I'm getting, and then Samuel Jackson, then get. <laughs> and, uh, we, uh, when he's breaking down, like, what he thinks happened, Samuel, like, he's breaking down what he thinks happened. And he's just like, so, that deduces that you did something to Bob and Sweet Dave. And I just wrote down, damn, that escalated quickly. <laughs> that really got out of hand. Well, it all kind of started when the coffee poisoning became apparent, right? That's when the movie really started to take a turn. Really? I guess you I could say it kind of... I guess you could say it started to take the turn when fucking Samuel Jackson was going on about how that guy sucked his dick. But <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. No? yeah. Uh, chapter five now is our flashback, which that's when they explained my door question, which I was yeah. kind of surprised by that. It, they all helped him with the door and shit like that. But here, here, here's my um fucking question with the uh, with the whole with that whole fucking thing. It's just that, like, yes, I get that, you know, th this, this was a different time and all that good shit. But, like, and I get that it's a movie, but I have to do think about some logic here. Wouldn't it have just been easier to come in there with your guns and just been like, okay, everybody, up against the fucking wall. And then you're like, here's how this is going to work. Right? Rather than, like, play it out like they did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. can I get some candy? How many sticks can I get for a nickel? Oh, by the way, <laughs> you know, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I guess they wanted to, like... I uh, mean, he shot that poor one girl, which I was just like, damn, the coffee wasn't that bad, was it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the six-horse fucking whatever the hell her name was? Yeah. 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 Um, maybe they wanted to, like, elude them into a false sense of security before they fucking killed them. And then they maybe it just made like, things easier. Then they kept saying, like, oh, yeah, they're shooting the N-words and shit like that. I'm like, the one girl was white. <laughs> and so was the other mean? guy. And, um, like, her death scene, she had the best death scene, I think, in the movie. She was, like, fucking begging for her life. I don't know. I think Bob's death was pretty fucking brutal. Yeah. No. So I'm just like, and then they kept fucking the old timer, which I'm just like, so wouldn't it have just been easier to just fucking come in, point your guns at everybody, be like, all right, this is how shit's going to work. My sister's coming up here, which we find out this is her brother, you know? Um, yeah. 
uh, like it just really, I don't know, just in a logical sense, it just yeah. would have made sense to be well, like, okay, this is how it's going to work. My, uh, my sister's coming up here in a little bit. We're all going to act like we're all fun and happy here. Everybody got that? Anybody makes any false moves? You're dead. You know? I also think that um, they were banking on him arriving at that cottage pretty hard, or Ashbury or whatever it was called. Because, yeah, yes, there was this haberdashery, sorry. Um, Ashbury. Because, um, I mean, yes, there was a storm coming in, and obviously you can only do so much Ashbury in a storm. sounds very but, smokable. Yeah, it does. Um, but if that storm hadn't to come in, I don't think that fucking uh, John Ruth would have wanted to stop anywhere. He would have no. just continued on to fucking Red Rock. So they were really banking on the fact that he would stop there. Yeah. But still, why kill everybody in the fucking place? Though? I think it just makes it easier later. It would be I, easier yeah. later. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah. Because then, like, you know, uh, no Minnie can't, like, there's no. Yeah. Minnie can't, like, fucking try and tell them somehow, like, what's going on. Like, I think it just made it easier, especially when you have that many people. This was like a few years after the Civil War. It's not like she could call them. Well, no, but I mean, if they were there, right, she could have fucking passed a note to them or something. It's just too much. There was too many of them for them to watch, I think, was the issue. Mm. And they only kept the one alive just to, like, make it look a little bit more less like something happened there, I guess. Make it more inconspicuous. Yeah. And he was like, well, I don't give a fuck. You just killed a bunch of black people and. I'm racist as shit, so okay. <laughs> he just basically pretended he saw nothing. Yeah. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. I'm just getting warm. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah, that, that, was, that was like the main questions I had about the chapter. I mean, it was well done and everything, but I was just like, why just come in and kill everybody when you could have just been like, all right, this is how it's going to work. Yeah. You know? I'm a, that's why I was like, shot the girl who made the coffee. I was, they're just like, wow, this is the best coffee in the. They go, uh, uh, this is all the best coffee in Wyoming. Then they shoot her in the head. I was just like, because that's what he was like, how's the coffee? And then he shoots her. I was like, well, damn, it wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> oh, like, I've had some bad shit before, but I never shot anybody over it. Like, fuck. Um, and what a weird place, though. Like, I was just like, okay, so it's kind of like a hotel, but a candy store, too. It's like mm. an inn, so to speak. It's like if you went to like a bed and breakfast. But it's not just like you go there to sleep and fucking, you know, because they're going to be trapped there potentially for a couple days from the storm, right? Yeah, they said, I think, two days. They said. Yeah, two to three days, I think. They weren't 100% sure, but. All right. And the last chapter, or chapter six, um, why did I wrote down I was just being sarcastic? What was that line for? I was just being sarcastic. Uh, fuck, I can't remember what that was. Um. I wrote, did not see that coming, which was when they shot Shannon Tatum. Yeah, um, he just pops his mm-hmm. head out. Fucking Samuel Jackson blows him away. <laughs> uh, oh, and he was like, oh, you believe in God now, huh? Well, bitch, you about to meet him. <laughs> bitch. And, <laughs> and the question I had was, okay, so Samuel Jackson points the gun at fucking Domaru and pulls the trigger. The bullet, The gun's empty. Yeah. So Domaru starts dragging the fucking body of Ruth towards the fucking machete or whatever it was to chop off his arm. Yeah. So like that's like further back in the room. If you look at it, wouldn't it have just been easier to drag Ruth? Because like look at the time she had. Mm-hmm. See, Mannix was passed out at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh Jackson had no bullets in the gun. Wouldn't it have just been easier to drag her body? towards Mannix and grab his gun and shoot him? Well, was Rather it... Rather than it, drag Ruth's body to a fucking machete, chop off the arm, which, logistically, that, that fucking would never happen that fast. Yeah, so it would be a lot more difficult. just drag his saw. body over to grab a gun and shoot him. Now, was the machete actually further away from her than the gun was? Yes. Okay, because I thought that the whole reason she did that was just to get to the gun quicker. So I missed that, but I I guess I don't know. I mean, yeah, it doesn't really make sense. That's all I have for this. Mm. Oh, and I did like it at the end where uh, he reads the Lincoln letter and he was just like, Mary Todd's calling. Nice touch. Yeah. <laughs> 
and then they just both die, basically. He just totally bought into the whole thing, even though he knew it was fake, and then that was that. Credits. Like... Like, I know, I was kind of disappointed when that was the end. I was like, we don't even get to find out if these two fuckers make it or not. Oh, they there's no way it. they no. made it. They got, like, two more days in that <laughs> fucking cabin at least, and they're fucking bleeding out. Oh, I mean, Maddox, or M- Mannix fucking passed out. I keep calling him Maddox. Mannix passed out from his blood loss, which I was surprised that he was able to just, like, get yeah. back up and fucking shoot her in the first place. That's right one. Yeah, I guess. So, yeah. Something, something Cody wrote. <laughs> Adrenaline. <laughs> so I will Suck. say, like, uh, overall, I, I was surprised as fuck. Um, is the best way to describe this, uh, 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 how much I enjoyed this. Yeah. Because I did yeah. not see it coming. If you would have, like I said, if you would have said before, and oh, you're gonna like this, I'm like, shut up. <laughs> like I'm gonna fucking hate this. Yeah. yeah. That's why I was just like, all right, I'm gonna break this up into two nights and fucking watch it and shit. And then, like, once I got to the haberdashery, I was stuck. I was just like, oh, fuck, man. Uh, I'm in. Yeah. You know? so, There's just uh, so many unanswered questions at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah, and it you just know? draws you in because yeah. you want to know the answers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so on a scale of 1 to 10, what do we give Quentin Tarantino's hateful 8? 9 out of 10. I give it 9 horse shits out of 10. And I fucking loved Kurt Russell in this. He fucking did a phenomenal job. And just well, like <laughs> continue. Him and Samuel L. Jackson are fucking wonderful in this. They fucking yeah, did. Samuel. Incredible. Honestly, there was not, in my opinion, a bad character in this film. There was a lot in Chapter 4 that didn't get a lot of time, obviously. Michael Madsen and Tim Roth with their recurring Quentin Tarantino roles still killing it. Like, just yeah. fucking. Yeah. 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 Very well acted movie. I will say I really like this movie, but it, it's apropos to give this movie an eight. Hmm. <laughs> That's true. I wanted to Very give it good. one more than the menu because I liked it better than the menu. Not that I did. Not that I didn't like the menu, obviously, but. So, so yeah, because I was pleasantly surprised by this movie. Mm-hmm. And spoiler alert! Right now, just so you guys know, the next time we do a movie episode, we'll be re- doing a movie called Logistic. No. Yeah. Not. Yeah. No. It's a movie yeah. that is. It's a movie Dummy. that is yeah, Dummy. It's a movie yeah. that is thirty five days long and uh, thirty five days seventeen hours long. For those of you listening at home, but we're doing the hour and ten minute version. We're not no, we're actually not. watching. We this. are not. We are not cheaping out on the listeners. We're gonna watch the whole thirty five day version, fucking uncut, uncensored. No. To be fair, we it's basically the same thing. To three way dance. <laughs> to be fair, it's basically the same thing as like looking at your local news camera that just stands up on a pole watching the highways. It'll be the same fucking thing. It's just a camera on a fucking chip for most of the movie. Yeah, but come on, man. Like it's it's hey, uh, what's his name? Andy Warhol once did an eight hour movie called Empire, and it's just an eight hour shot of the Empire State Building. What do you talk about for that? I guess at least then there's people walking by. This, for what I've seen, is literally just ocean. And maybe a seagull pops in every now and then. Yeah, we could talk about the seagull. Uh, The seagulls are very uh, important in the movie. Best character. That seagull is probably long dead by now. (laughs) Why are you going to bring this all down? Nick's really against watching the movie because it's... Why would you even suggest this? Because it's different, man. Nick's against it because it's a Swedish film. Exactly. No, it's not yeah. because it's a Swedish film. It's just because it's a ridiculous idea. There's no way we could even get an episode done within three months. Who fucking knows what we're going to be doing? It's only one. It's only 35 days long. That's a month. We could get that. Yes, but month. there is no way when you two both have fucking jobs and I fucking do the shit. I'll tell I you can- what. Why don't we make it a marathon? We'll watch five hours a week. No. <laughs> we are looking for a new dance out. of the three. We are looking through a new host of the three-way dance. I could probably knock out about five hours a day. I mean, I couldn't knock out five hours a day. I couldn't knock out five hours a day, a week, a month, a year. I'm not watching this shit. Hey, how many shitty AEW pay-per-views do we have to watch a year? I don't give a shit how many <laughs> shitty AEW pay-per-views like in your hours eyes we have to watch. There are some of them I very much enjoy. The there's some of them like, what the fuck is this? 
But even still, I would enjoy. I would even watch WoW Unleashed like fucking 10 more times before I would even consider watching this fucking 35 day fucking long. I film. really wish you hadn't have said that. Well, no. I suppose <laughs> I, it's that's too bad. We're watching fucking WoW Unleashed five times in a row because that'd be 10 hours. No, oh, not. no. Oh, no. For those of you who don't know, logistics is about uh, uh, the cycle of a pedometer in reverse chronological order from end of sales back to its origin and manufacturer. And it's shown in real time, hence why the movie is 35 days and 17 hours long. It's over 58,000 minutes. Yes. The project was filmed in real time during a trip to... 857 minutes. Uh, no, hours. no, yeah, that's hours. It's 51 or hours. Sorry. Eight, 857 hours is what yeah, I read. 51,420 minutes. It was filmed in real time during a trip to and in, in locations at a factory following the route of the products manufacturer from the store in Stockholm, where it was purchased to the factory in China, where it was manufactured. I mean, come on. Why aren't y'all riveted by that? Why have you seen any of this yet? By that, cause man, that's fucking that's art right there, man. I literally walk every day with the pedometer clipped to my pants. And don't you want to know where that pedometer fucking goes through to get to your pants? You know what? I got I got a better (laughs) idea. I got a better idea. Let's put a pedometer on Nick with the camera on it, and just let him walk around for eight hundred and fifty-seven hours. I don't think you want to watch that. that. Why? Do you put the pedometer on your dick or something? No, I, I put it like when I'm asleep, it just sits on a table. It's dark. See? Now that's art. That is art. Oh, fuck off. It's art. <laughs> I do not believe either of you when you say, oh, that's art. Fuck you. You don't know what art is. Hey, everything can be art. Exactly. Like yeah. logistics. Logistically, everything can be art. It's the longest movie. I could stick my foot up your ass too. <laughs> it's the longest movie ever made. It came out in Sweden in 2012. It is our. It's going on the wheel. If it lands no, on it's it, it's not. Like... <laughs> if it lands on it, I quit. <laughs> Come on, Nick. You got to be a team player. A team player. <laughs> no, I don't. I already had to sit through movie 43. Are you fucking kidding me? Oof. I'm not saying You know, I would probably watch this, this 35 day shit. long movie like five times over before I watched movie 43 again. Nope. Not for me. <laughs> I will watch movie 43 again multiple times before I, I have to see a 35 so day watching. movie on a fucking step counter. With no dialogue. You you wear one every day. Don't you want to know the journey of how it gets to where it it starts? I don't give a fuck. (laughs) The reason I have it is to count my fucking steps. Exactly. But don't you want to know how it gets to where uh, it started? No, because I don't give a shit. (laughs) You know, the music is actually, like, really creepy, too. Oh, there's music? Yeah, I don't know if it's music or... It is music. It's just like a bass track kind of thing. Oh, but it's like, it's very it's ominous. So Do you have any idea how fucking stupid you two sound right now? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> That's a fucking lie, and you know it. <laughs> this is going on the wheel. Yeah, do you want to see a, re- see a review of a shipping container movie? Because we can watch that. A shipping container. That's what this is. Is, is, there, is there a review? I don't know if there is a review, actually. I'm not is. watching this shit, no matter what has to do with it. Fuck. Hold on. Let's see if, let's see if there's a review. Hold on. Let's just see if there's a review. Who just wastes their time to do a review of this? Review. Let's see. Of music and a video of a fucking step cam. Uh, I really Dominator. don't think... I really don't think you're seeing the fucking the bigger picture with this. I really hey, don't think hey, it's you have got any idea what the bigger picture is. Hey, there's 182 reviews on IMDb and it averages 
without looking it up, take a guess what the movie average is at. I don't care. Six point uh, four. Wow. You're fucking kidding me. Yeah. Who the fuck had enough time to be like, oh, this is a six point four. This is better than fucking no, average. No, that's just the average. That's just the average. This like, is I, an average film, six point four. Let's go to IMDb. What the fuck is wrong with you, Pete? Let, let's see one of the reviews here. Let's see. Let's see what they say. And people call Good Burger a shitty movie. People call Three Ninjas, High Noon, and Mega Mountain a shitty movie. And now uh, you're critically okay, okay. claiming a 35-day fucking shit fest of a pedometer no, okay, on vehicles wait. with music playing. Wait, wait. Here's a review. 10 out of 10, cinematic masterpiece. I think that the director accurately depicts a common lumberjack's life. I have found myself in this situation. It was a true struggle before. Okay, wait a minute. Hold on. I, I think was going to say, I don't know what the fuck their you're reading. off their genitals. This is the movie, off. though, but hold on. That's That review it's doesn't... Hand off your genitals and find somebody that will actually accept you for who you are. Okay, here we go. This review actually says... This is a 5 out of 10 review. And it says, The most confusing 35 days and 17 hours of my life. When I heard of the movie called Logistics, I was instantly interested by the plot. Come on, see, right there. Of the production cycle of a pedometer. It's just such a great idea. However, once I started once I started playing to my dismay, I was shocked. Had I made a mistake? Question mark. Everything was backwards. I thought maybe this would be a situation like Memento, but the entire movie was playing backwards. This is this is when I realized the real plot was the production of a pedometer in reverse chronological order. I continued to watch it despite my confusion. It was just odd. For 35 days and 17 hours, I sat there watching this movie. I'm giving it 5 out of 10 for a few reasons. First of all, the cinematography is absolutely fantastic. See? Look at that right there. Um, I can't listen of- to any more of this shit because it's obviously a fucking lie. <laughs> I'm looking at it right Fuck now. This movie. I was going to say, this guy reviews. sounds like he wrote a fucking review. <laughs> this Some guy lo- jerks off with sandpaper. Fuck him. Some of the longest takes and most amazing shots I've ever seen. I also have to praise the actors in this film from the ship containers. And oh, the- come on. <laughs> There's some great acting. Unfortunately, I don't think I was able to make out any of the dialogue since it was all backwards. And you were willing to subject people to this nonsense of fucking reviews of this 35 day fucking bullshit shit fest. And the whole thing just ends kind of abruptly, leaving me confused. In conclusion, I think I'm going to have to give it a rewatch in chronological order. No, I think you're going to have to bury this thing forever. Here's Here's a comment on YouTube. I worked 27 years in logistics. I could say that this movie was more exciting. (laughs) Here's another. There's not a written review. It's just a title and a rating. It just says 10 out of 10 stars. Too short. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> I'm dead serious. I'm reading uh, these from IMDb. <laughs> Apparently, you have to rent it. Oh, you can't just watch it. Yeah. Why has this? Why was this even dreamt of? I just. Uh, no. well, I can actually. I don't want to hear about. I don't want to hear about. But you just asked. <laughs> I don't give a shit if I just asked. I don't want to hear about. It wasn't that pretty good to take literally. And that's what's up my ass this week. Fuck this movie. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, For a fucking like 37 day long movie, it's got a very short synopsis. 35 days, and hours. In reverse hours holy fuck. <laughs> We're trying to add days to it. We're not Hulk Hogan traveling to Japan. Oh my god. Uh okay, here's a nine out of ten review. The best 35 days and 17 hours of my life. Literally the best pacing I have ever seen in a movie ever. The writing was outstanding and I couldn't take my eyes off the screen. Wish I watched it in a theater. Imagine it on the big screen. 
Not quite a 10 because I think some bits were too long. However, this does not take away uh, this does not take away the amazing cinematography. Would watch again. Highly recommended to all ages. I do apologize, but I would slap that person at least 17 times. <laughs> I don't think you read this one. Did you read 10 out of 10 starts off slow? Oh, here we go. Okay, 10 out of 10 starts off slow. Starts off slow. The first three and a half days of the runtime are kind of boring, but OMG, by the fourth through the 25th day, uh, things really pick pick up. And the final 10 days had me on the edge of my coma. <laughs> Somebody definitely taught this person how to masturbate. <laughs> I think we need to review this. How much is it to rent? I don't know. I didn't find it. I didn't even I'm, I I'm find not the watching website. This. If you're thinking you need to review this, you do it over the two weeks after resolution revolution when I'm not here. Cause fuck. I've never. I mean, I have seen. Dave's not going for a piss or shit or eating or whatever, so you can watch well, obviously this. Obviously, you can pause it to go take a piss and shit. I'm but... not doing. No, I'm hey. not even gonna watch it. 10 so out of 10, so matter. good, I had to watch it twice. I loved this movie. The Spider-Man death scene was so you sad. I cried when fun. Batman died, and also when Joe Biden at the pier in reverse. When the cheese fell off the table, that moved me. Okay. Damn it, Sean, you suck. <laughs> it's very highly reviewed. It might be the highest reviewed film we've ever watched. Or we're not watching. Because I'm not watching it. Nick is Shelby, or Nick is refusing. To, usually Shelby would be like the one that's like, fuck this, I'm not doing it. But it's actually Nick this time. I mean, I watched a movie about a tire that's sentient, so. <laughs> oh, Rubber? Yeah, fucking loved Rubber. It's so good. Uh, oh, God, I can't find where you can rent this. Yeah, I just, I read a YouTube video and it said that it costs money to rent it. I don't know where, but. Mm. No, I don't want to watch the 72-minute version. Fuck that. That's for pussies. If you're out there watching the 72-minute version of this movie, go to hell. 10 out of 10, best movie of 2020 or 2012. I watched this movie with so much passion, but the only problem is that I had to buy 20 packs of diapers for me and my 35-year-old wife because we couldn't lose any second of this majestic super... Uh, I stop abnormal. talking about this now. This is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I've never heard Nick so mad over a fucking movie in my life, even more than fucking movie forty three. Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started about that one again. <laughs> Not right now. Oh, yeah, I hear you on that. Uh, okay, so I well, have one more so movie just... taboo. Let's just agree to disagree. We'll we'll think about it, okay? Yeah, we can think about it. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You'll be looking for a new co-host as well. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, I, I got a few more of these movie taboos here. So. I only have one. All right. Uh, first one here. Two. Um, how do I put this? Two star-crossed lovers reconnect in high school. Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. No. Since when are Romy and Michelle lovers? I don't know. Two star-crossed lovers reconnect in high school, but they are from... Or, 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 here, I'll add some more to it. But they are from opposite... Blast from the past. No. What's the word I'm looking for here? Two star cross lovers reconnect in high school, but they are from opposite friend groups. Let's put it like Logistics. <laughs> no. <laughs> Romeo and Juliet. No. Yeah, I got nothing. Yeah, neither do I. I'm fucking lost here. Grease. Oh my god. Grease. Yeah. No okay. fuck. It should have been something to have to do with fucking the malarkey you were talking about before. Fuck. 
All right, a high school student and a retired science. Fucking... Back to the future. Damn it. <laughs> um, dinosaurs. Jurassic Park. There you go. Wow. Really thought I had the box for that <laughs> yeah, one. I did. <laughs> I did. All right, uh, this one. <clears throat> A TV executive start. A TV executive starts his own wrestling show. No, it's bad. Yeah, there you go. Mm. I didn't mean to say wrestling, but it just slipped out. I hate how I fucking knew that because that movie was shit. No, it wasn't. You suck. <laughs> oh yeah. <clears throat> you have another one, Shelby? Uh yeah. Um. Famous political activist uh, gets murdered. Milk. No. Famous political activist gets murdered. JFK. Nope. Malcolm X. Malcolm X is correct. Oh, okay. Uh, um, okay, I've got one more. I can't I come one. up with anything more. All right. Um... A beleaguered businessman takes his family to Las Vegas. Oh. Is it Rat Race? No. Oh. Businessman takes his family to Las Vegas. A beleaguered businessman takes his family to Las Vegas. Beleaguered? Not successful. Huh. Takes his family to Las Vegas. Oh, uh, Vegas Vacation. Yeah. But he's successful in that movie because he finally got his food thing to pass. Okay, he got it to pass, but he was still beleaguered before he got it to pass and go to Vegas. That's true. There you go. Anybody want any milk? Six years old. It, yeah. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Um, I have one more written down, but I don't think y'all are going to get it, even if I fucking describe it. Okay, a, um, a group of women band together to fight an evil crime boss. In a fictional city. Ocean's Eight. Um... No. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Say it again. <clears throat> a group of women band together to take on a crime boss in a fictional city. Uh, Charlie's Angels? No. You're thinking on the right track, though. Hmm. I got nothing. Is there like a Powerpuff Girls movie? <laughs> there is, but it's not Powerpuff. Yeah, movie. okay. <laughs> I don't think y'all are going to get Birds of Prey. Oh, I've heard of it. I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh, man, that's a good one. And last one here. <clears throat> the story. Um, how do I put this? Um, the story of a mechanical. The story of a mechanical device on a road trip. <laughs> Logistics. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> thought I had the side of the box for those ones. <laughs> well, I was trying to make it sound like a little less obvious than logistics, but, you know, I couldn't think of anything better, you know. Mm. You know? Oh, okay. I don't know why I used the bell for this one, but whatever. No, nah, whatever. Uh, there's the bell. So that signifies the end of this week's episode of Three Way Dance Goes to the Movies. Uh, next week, we will be reviewing AEW's Revolution, um, which, you know, it looks like a good card. Orange Cassidy and Dan House and for AEW Tag Team Champions. It's they time they, the tag titles so I mean, hard. I know they're going to fucking lose the tag team title match. I know they're going to lose that tag team title match, but I'm just glad they didn't finally job out Danhausen on TV again. 
Well, he's never really I mean, had any matches win. anyway. Well, in the, the ones he has, they usually fucking just job, job him out. Job out, yeah. You know, so I'm glad they at least gave him a win on TV. I mean, he's not going to win the tag titles because no. Cassidy has the All Atlantic Championship. I have a feeling that this is how they're going to get the belt on Lethal and Jerry. I hope not. I just have a feeling. Please, no. Honestly, their tag team division's in such shambles anyway, it really doesn't fucking matter. Everything oh. is shambles with Tony Khan booking. Stay tuned next week for what is up my ass, because it's a big fucking what's up my ass. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I always look forward to what's up Nick's ass, though. Fuck. We got to pull what, whatever's out of there and talk about it. We, we, I think we all need a what's up my ass segment. <laughs> like throughout the whole show. You know, like Nick gets his in the beginning. Maybe Shelby gets his in the middle. I get mine at the end or vice versa. Yeah. You know, maybe yeah. something bothers us, you know. But <clears throat> all right, guys. So that's going to do it for us. We will see you guys next week. For AEW Revolution. And then uh, we're we'll going to do some retro pay-per-views. Because Nick will be on vacation. Um, maybe me maybe me and Shelby will review logistics. And, you know, who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> so until next time, guys. For Nick and Shelby, I'm Yars version 1. And remember, be breezy.